Hey guys, Maven here. In 2001, I made my WWE debut, and in 2005, they fired me. A few years after that, they gave me an opportunity to go back. I said no. <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna be discussing why I said no and why I regret that to this day. In a previous video, I spoke all about me getting fired and what it did, what it was like, how it took my, uh, you know, my identity. Once my wrestling career was was over, the biggest question I had to answer was, what exactly was I going to do then? During the time that I was at home, during the 90 days while I was still collecting a check from the WWE, I got an interesting call, and it was a call from VH1. The call was for asking me immediately, would I be interested? in doing the show The Surreal Life and I was I was literally right in the middle of taking a nap and uh, probably still not in a good headspace so I was I, I immediately said no I was like no that's the has-been show was the show entertaining it was it was extremely entertaining but it was entertaining what I saw is for all the wrong reasons deciding uh, you know if I wanted to do a, a, a show like The Surreal Life wasn't, I can promise you, it was not my first choice. But I kind of had an end, and that end was the casting producer from my first season of Tough Enough happened to so happen to be the casting producer for that season of The Surreal Life. And she told me, she said, they pay 50 grand. <laughs> I'm like, I'm packing, I'm on a plane when you need me. <laughs> the, the Surreal Life came out and I mean, got a you know a small smattering of buzz from it, but nothing that would, uh, would be you know, ground shaking until I got a call from a guy from BET, Black Entertainment Television. BET was starting up a new hour long show on doing the top 10 videos of Neo Soul videos for the week and it was going to be a a perspective of something in New York City. The BET hosting gig led me to an audition, an interview in late 2007 with uh, another uh, another brand that would probably become one of the craziest brands I've ever been uh, attached to, and that was HSN, the Home Shopping Network. I uprooted my entire life and I moved to St. Petersburg. That's where the home office of the Home Shopping Network was. And across the bridge in Tampa, off of Dale Mabry Avenue at the time, was FCW, Florida Championship Wrestling. And I was able to go to shows. I, we quickly found out that we we were, you know, former guys, we were welcome there. So I was there at FCW on a Wednesday or a Thursday, I forget when they ran the shows, and I ran into Pat Patterson there. Pat was one of Vince's right-hand hand guys, and Vince trusted Pat. Pat, you know, asked me, he was like, yeah, dude, Maven, do you, do, you, do you think of coming back any? I told him, you know, yes, I do think about coming back. I, I think about it almost every day, but, you know, I'm, 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 I was like, Pat, I'll be worried, man. What if I, you know, what if I leave my job? What if I leave the money that I know is coming in? Pat told me right then, and I should have listened to him. He said, Maven, you have the, you have the rest of your life to make money. You know, follow what you love. I played it off. Okay. Sure. Um, didn't think much of it. A few weeks after that interaction with Pat, I got my first call from head of talent relations, Johnny Ace. And in that first phone call, he was like, you, have you thought about coming back? And I told him what I told Pat. Yeah, of course I have, Johnny. I think about it all the time. He said, you've been gone long enough that if you come back now, you won't be the tough enough kid anymore. And he's probably right. I'm not saying that Tough Enough held me back. It did not. Tough Enough gave me the career that I had. However, in order to transition from just being the Tough Enough person, you know, Tough Enough kid to a actual work working wrestler, a la John Morrison, a la The Miz, you have to be able to get out of that aura that people view you in as, ah, he's just the Tough Enough kid. And I, during my first run, I don't think I ever did. Johnny thought that would be a great opportunity to repackage me, bring me back in as a heel, a bad guy, instead of a, a, a baby face, a good guy, because I was a way better heel than I was a baby face. And you know, you know what? I, he's probably not wrong. It probably, it probably would have worked. He was like, I, I know you're down in Florida. Why don't you go and just start training a little bit? 
And then he told me, he was like, I, 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 I told him my concerns with money. I was like, listen, Johnny, I've got, I've now got a house in Virginia, a, you know, a place down here. I have real world responsibilities. It's not like the first go round where if this didn't work out, I was going to move back in with my mom until I landed back on my feet, you know. You know, she's gone. I have responsibilities. He told me he was getting, you know, he was giving me the, going to bring me back in on the exact same downside guarantee that I uh, that I left on, which was, again, I don't remember if it was either 150 or 175. And he was like, well, we'll put you in, in developmental in FCW for a couple months until you get your win back, until we get the writing team, you know, something to, you know, and to meet with you about, to, to bring you back in. I was like, okay, let me think about it. So probably two weeks or so passed by and uh, he calls me back. And he asked me, he was like, yeah, yeah, listen. And, and it was funny because he told me, he was like, yo, you gotta, if you're gonna do this, you gotta do it while you're still, while you're still a good looking guy. <laughs> and that always made me laugh. The day's gonna come when you can't do this business anymore. When you're young, you, man, you think you got all the time in the world. What I should have done was I should have accepted his offer. I should have told him, you know, give, give me two weeks. Let me, let me do the proper thing. Give me two weeks. And then I should have went to my uh, bosses at the home shopping network and told them I had an opportunity, gave my two weeks, and I should have given given everything I had back to the business just to see what could have happened. At 46, it's just it's not a realistic possibility anymore. I mean, you know, too much is you know, too much time's passed. My body doesn't feel as good as it as it did back then. Um, I'm not near as athletic as I was back then. My workout regimen now is stretching, not working out. You know, and that's just to make sure my back doesn't hurt the next morning. The HSN job, I'm not going to say anything. That was the, a great job. Like the money was great. The uh, the days were even better. I mean, there were weeks when I would only work a couple days, and it was fantastic. And hell, a couple of those days might be I might have a 15 minute hit on a product for the entire day. Show up, you know, an hour before the show. Do makeup, which I am not wearing now and have not worn in any of these videos, thank you very much. Do a 15 minute sell on a product and then be gone. But the HSN job I could have done now, I could have done five years after that, I could have done after I gave gave wrestling a uh, another shot. So I don't know what would have happened. I don't know, I might have went back. I might have went back, they might have repackaged me and then people would might have still been like, ah, oh, here's that dumb, tough enough kid again, man. We, we had enough of him the first time. I don't know. Or I might have went back as a a little bit more of a veteran in the business. I'm you know, learning what I had learned on the indie scene, learning you know, how to become a better worker. And I might have been a bigger asset to the WWE. And unfortunately, it's something that I'm never going to know. But you know what? I'm okay with where I'm at now. I'm okay with my my little bit of a slot in the history of wrestling. And hey, the only thing we can control is the present. And that's what I try to do day in and day out. Now we wouldn't be talking about a second chance if the WWE didn't fire me the first time. To learn all about that, click the video above.